the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to pray with perseverance and fervor for our Christian brothers <coughs> who are persecuted. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, Saint of Wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this morning, we continue to study reasoning, and we study another kind of syllogism, Catech, uh, hypothetical syllogism. Last class we studied categorical syllogism. That means we start from an affirmation or a negation. Here we start from an hypo hypothesis, a supposition. We suppose huh? that something, and from that supposition we deduce other things. So that is uh, syllogism we use many, many times. Huh? If uh, if uh, you are uh, tired, you will not be able to study logic. Huh? Or if you study logic very well, you will have a good success, etc. We use that. So that is uh, a way of reasoning that is very current. Huh? Very current. Yeah. Yeah. Hypothetical syllogism. I will give you the simplest example. It is in your e. If you understand that example, you understand everything, because it is so obvious. Huh? For example, if Paul works, then he exists. Common sense, no? He works. He, Paul, huh? works. Therefore, he <coughs> exists. So, in that reasoning, we have a major, a minor, and a conclusion. But the major is not categorical, it's not an affirmation, it is a supposition. If if and in the consequence. Huh? So that kind of reasoning uh, is made with two parts. The part we call it the antecedent, and after that, then the consequence. Be careful, not the consequence. Huh? On your paper here somewhere, I think, <laughs> is not the way it is written consequence. Yes. Consequent, huh? not consequence. You see that, huh? Okay. Co condition. <coughs> huh? So the antecedent, the consequent, or the condition, if huh? conditional, and the other, the conditioned. Or we can say the cause. And here, the effect. And the symbol for the antecedent is P, and the symbol for the consequent is Q. So that is, uh, uh, so you have an antecedent. For example, the antecedent here is what Paul works. The consequent is he exists. Or oh, to exist, he must work, that condition. Or the fact he works cause, uh, the, the, of course, does not cause his existence, <coughs> but cause the possibility to affirm that he exists. Okay? Now, <coughs> if Paul work, so I can say P, uh, if P, if P, then what happened? Q, he exists. Thank you. Paul exists. That is the major, huh? the major premise, like in the other category, huh? the major premise. Okay? Uh, now, he works. That is the minor, the fact. Huh? You remember, the, even in the categorical syllogism, 
the minor was related to a fact, huh? to a fact. So what is the fact? He, he works. Oh, oh, also, he also not, does not work, does not exist. He can work, he cannot work, he can exist, he cannot exist. For the moment, the hypothesis is he works. Huh? So I affirm P. I affirm P. Therefore, conclusion, I affirm Q. Q. He exists. That is the first kind of hypothetical syllogism. You affirm the antecedent uh, or the condition, you affirm the consequent or the condition. Or you affirm the cause, you affirm the effect. Huh? Uh, for example, if you play with matches, you will put fire on something. Huh? You play with matches, Therefore, you put fire, okay? So that is, uh, we call that form of syllogism called that ponens. Well, ponens come from polo in Latin. They mean to put, to put on the table, huh? to put the deposit on the table, huh? to put. And the um, participant, ponens, is putting, huh? is the press. Present participle, putting. Now, what is the meaning of that? What we are doing? We are putting <laughs> the antecedent. We affirm the condition. We say the condition is realized. You understand that? Huh? If I say, if Paul works, and after that I say, he works, therefore I affirm. So, ponens is the same thing as I affirm. Okay? I affirm. I say that is true. That is the fact. Okay? That kind of syllogism called polis. We affirm the, the antecedent. We affirm the condition. We affirm the cause. And because of that, we, ha we know the effect. We know the con uh, condition. And we know the consequence. <coughs> now, I take another possibility. The second possibility, I can say, he does not exist. He does not exist. If he does not exist, therefore, he does not work, no? It's not necessary to have a doctorate to, to affirm that. Huh? <laughs> if it does not exist, it does not work. That means if you Walk. deny the effect, if you deny the consequence, if you deny the condition, huh? and the symbol of denying is the tilde. Huh? The tilde in Spanish, you know that, huh? the tilde. Huh? <laughs> Señor, huh? Señor, ten piedad. <laughs> <laughs> Like Father, Father Severinus, he knows that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, see if I deny Q, what will happen? I will deny P. So I deny. Now, here, the minor is not affirming, the minor is denying. Huh? It is a negation. Huh? I don't affirm, I deny. In, we call that, in logic, tall length. Tall length. Tall length means to take off. Huh? Take, uh, take off. And when you say in Latin, I use the quid tollis peccata mundi, Mr. What do you say? I use the Lamb of God who takes away. Huh? That means it's not there. You know, we take off. Instead of putting the affirmation, we take off the affirmation. That means we deny. Huh? We deny. If I, I suppose I, I say yes, after that I took my vote. No. That I 
tollens. I take it, I take it away from the table, from the box of rotation. So I deny. So that is tolerance. So when we deny the consequent, when we deny the condition, when we deny the effect, we deny the antecedent, the condition, and the cause. So if I deny the effect, I deny the cause. If there is no effect, therefore there is no cause. Common sense, my, my, my dear Watson, huh? <laughs> That's Sherlock Holmes, huh? my dear Watson. <clears throat> it's logic, huh? okay. So they are the, only the two modes that are valid in hypothetical syllogism. Ponens and tolens. Affirming the cause or the antecedent or the condition or denying <coughs> the consequence. Okay? <coughs> now we will try the two other. So that is the valid form. Huh? Two valid. The, the other are invalid. But let us prove that it, they are invalid. The third possibility, and we have four possibilities, no? not two, two by two, four. If Paul works, then he exists. But he does not work. What do I do here? I deny P. What is the consequence of that? Nothing. Nothing. Can you affirm something by the fact that Paul does not work? No. no. Oh, the, the chart. Yeah, okay. okay. It can exist. It can also not exist. So we don't know. And that is because invalid form. Huh? Invalid. Because we, that leads to nothing. And if you say that it does not exist, it is absolutely in. Right. But in in uh, modern for uh, in modern logic, what they say? They say if P excuse me, if non P therefore two possibilities P a Q or non Q. So they say the both are true. Yes, they can be true but not at the same time. Okay? So for us we say we don't know because we are linked with the truth. We study logic to find the truth. In modern but logic, it's like ma mathematics. In mathematics, there is no truth. There is only validity. You can put what you want on, a, on any symbol, you know? <laughs> it, the truth is not the preoccupation of a mathematician. But for a logician, the truth is a preoccupation, but we study logic as a tool to attain the truth. So because we don't know, we are we say we don't know. Here they say both both are true, but not at the same time. Finally, the fourth possibility. So the fourth possibility is to he exists, Paul exists. So I affirm Q. If I affirm Q, can I affirm he works? No. No, no. no he can sleep, he can play soccer, he can study logic. <laughs> of course, study logic is to work. Hmm? So we don't know. Huh? But for ma modern mathemat modern <laughs> logic, you will see Q <coughs> is implied by P or non-P. That means the two are possible. P or non-P. Okay. <laughs> if you understand that, you can settle all the problem. Not, in fact, it's not difficult. And every time you have a problem, uh, an exercise, don't forget. The first if is P, and then is Q. And you have four possibilities. Huh? Okay, the first possibility, if I don't, just summarize that here. Yeah. 
first if p uh, then q okay so if i have p i have q no if i have from p i have from q remember pronouns huh? mm -hmm. i have from p i have from q first possibility or if you want i have from p i have from q in, in modern logic p imply q okay the second possibility if p then q okay but that one here i deny q P. So I deny P. P. So, so deny Q. Deny P. I deny P. Okay? That is the second possibility. I deny Q. I deny P. The third possibility. If if P and then Q, but I have, I deny P. What happened? I don't know. We don't know. That is also, so I deny P. I don't know Q. So two possibilities in modern, Q or non Q. Q. And finally, the last one. <coughs> if P then Q, if I affirm Q, what happened to P? I don't know. We don't know. In modern logic, they are right. If no, I affirm Q, P. and is implied by two possibilities, P, P or non-P. Non and here we have the summary of everything. Everything is, that is ponens, because I affirm <coughs> the subject, is, is ponens, <coughs> I, 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 I turn the subject um, uh, P, A, I delight Q. The other are invalid. Invalid. Or unknown, we don't know. Okay? I have a question on that. Master that, I guarantee you settled everything. Okay? Now? But sometimes be careful. Here it is written, <coughs> if P, then Q. They sometimes they write, huh? They, 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 for example, your mother say, if you eat your soup, you will have ice cream. And she can say, you will have ice cream if you eat your soup. Mm -hmm. The position is not important, no? Understand that, huh? Yes. I can put the condition the, before the condition or the effect before the cause. That is what is important. It is if and then. Huh? Sometimes in English also they use when. Huh? When. Huh? When Paul works or if Paul works. Okay? That is <coughs> essential. Master that, I guarantee you will have no problem after that. Okay? Now, another thing. When you study a categorical syllogism, you remember what was the link between the major and minor, we call premises, and the conclusion? What was the logical link? The middle term. The middle term. Yeah, the middle term. But there was how, how the middle term obliged us to affirm the conclusion. What we call that? In faith, rent. Remember the necessity, huh? the link, the inference. So here, the inference in that kind of synergism, huh? the inference, <coughs> we, we see uh, as, as a philosopher, logician, they call that the consequence. Consequence. Not consequent. Consequence. The consequence is the inference. Is the logical necessity to affirm the conclusion. And the consequence is not on the paper. The consequence is in your mind. 
it is the insight, huh? the insight. You understand the link or you don't understand the link? For example, I can write it if 5 plus 3 equals 4 multiplied by 2. If you understand, you have the inference. Maybe somebody is here. If you don't understand, you don't have the inference. You don't have the insight. So here, the inference or the insight or the <coughs> understanding of the necessary, necessary link between the premises and the conclusion is called consequence. So the difference between consequent and consequence. Consequence is the inference, <laughs> is the insight, <laughs> the understanding. That is here. <coughs> It is so true that, huh, I told you, you teach mathematics, you teach geometry, or you make an experimentation in front of your student. Someone, they see the logical link, and someone, they are like fish in an aquarium. Huh? They open their eye, but they see nothing. Huh? <laughs> that means the inference is in your, it is uh, the psychological, if you want, huh? part of the reasoning because you reason with your mind. It is your mind that sees, huh, that grasps, there is a necessary link between the two premises and the conclusion. It is your, uh, it is your intellect, your mind, that you see the link here to affirm and the link here to deny. You know? That is the consequence. Okay? Well, we have many examples. I give you many examples uh, to help you to understand. Huh? For example, uh, if you want to become a deacon on page, next page, page 78, huh? <coughs> if you want to become a deacon, you must study theology. So we yeah, are, first, huh? you want to become a deacon, P, you are from P, therefore you are from Q. So you must study theology. The second part, you don't study theology, therefore you don't want to become a deacon. <coughs> They have the two valid pronouns and tonans. Okay? Now, the two of them are invalid. You want to become a deacon, huh? but you may, um, um, you, um, you affirm the effect. Yes, you study theology. If you study theology, is it necessary to become a deacon? Sure. No, you can become a teacher. In fact, many sisters, many elite women, many elite people, they study theology. Okay? And finally, if you deny the cause, you, you, uh, you don't want to become a deacon, does that mean you don't want to study theology? You can study theology. So, in fact, there is only two valid uh, possibilities, huh? two valid. And on next paragraph, you have uh, the synthesis of that with uh, I drink, if I drink a poison, huh? I will be sick. I affirm P because I drank the poison, therefore I am sick. Or I do not, I am not sick, therefore I did not drink the poison. But I can also, uh, I deny, you know, be careful. I did, oh, interesting here, I did not drink the poison. What is the negation of I did not drink the poison? I drank the poison. Be careful, that is a trick, huh? Tricky sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I know that this is standing block for some students. So let us preview. Preview over here for a gentleman. Okay. It is an essential, a negative example here. Huh? Uh, oh, if I drink. Uh, uh, this poison. poison, I will be sick. We don't say that kind of poison. It can be, it can be what it comes. So. <laughs> okay, I drink this poison. Well, if P, if I affirm P, I affirm Q. I mean, if I drink. The poison, I will be sick. sick. Okay? Yeah. If I 
I'm not sick. I am sure I did not drink the poison. Okay? Now, the third possibility. I did not drink the poison. I did not drink the poison. Therefore, I will not be sick. No. No? No. no. I can be sick for another exactly. reason. Yeah. So I don't, don't know. No. And finally, if I <laughs> affirm I am sick, can I say it is because I drank the poison? I don't know. No. Okay. Is that difficult, my dear student? Yeah. <laughs> it's very easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can ask. <laughs> Sometimes, how we say in French, um, uh, they make they make a uh, they make a mountain with a with a mouse. Huh? <laughs> the mouse become a mountain. <laughs> okay. Uh, here you have the synthesis of everything. Huh? But one exception, huh? one exception on page 101, 101. But that exception, in fact, it is easy to understand because it is the case, in fact, of definition. Huh? For example, if you say, if it is a man, it is a rational animal. Of course, it is the same thing. I can say also, if it is a rational animal, it is a man. No, in that case, can't they are yeah. co-terminus. In fact, they are the, the same thing. Huh? So that is not a real syllogism. So it is, and that exists only for what is essential. You remember, subject and predicate. When the link, huh? what is the link? They call that. You remember. Predicable. Huh? When the link is essential, when is the link essential? When it is a genus, specific difference, or species. And also, we can consider also the property. Because the property flows from the specific difference. Huh? Okay? So, when you have that, you can, and you know, it, it, the four possibilities are good, but that is a special case. Okay? In fact, it is a case of identity. They are identical. Now I go to 1.2. The advice I give you every time. You have to analyze a hypothetical syllogism. Go back to Paul works. <laughs> oh. be sure there be no mistake. And sometimes it is a little bit confused. But Paul works, he exists. Use that, be sure never you will make a mistake. Okay? Prophet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know a prophet can tell the the, the future, but you are the free. You are free, so there is always possibility of mistake. <laughs> okay. So the relation now between the hypothetical syllogism and the categorical syllogism. In fact, the hypothetical syllogism is a variation of the categorical, categorical syllogism. Let us take the example here, that is given by Sister Spengler. If, if, if a snake is a copperhead, it is a poisonous pit viper. So if P, uh, P is a uh, snake is a copperhead, next, the copperhead is a poisonous viper. So, okay. Mm. Now, this snake, are copperhead. What do I do here? I affirm P. No? Therefore, I affirm Q. No? Yeah. Here I have, if a snake is a copperhead, therefore, this snake is poison. Yeah. I have, if I affirm P, here, yeah. I will affirm Q. So if I affirm the snake is a copperhead, I will affirm that the snake is 
dangerous, venomous, huh? poisonous. Okay? But now, if I can transform that, I can say every copper head is a poisonous viper. These snakes are copper heads, therefore, these snakes are poisonous viper. So I can transform the ponens, uh, the ponen, when I affirm the, the condition, into a first figure a syllogism, supre, uh, so pre. That means the middle term is subject in the first and predicate in the, in the second. Subject in the major and uh, predicate in the minor. I can transform every uh, hypothetical syllogism into a categorical syllogism. That is a beautiful question for examination. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let us continue. If I deny uh, Tollen, uh, Tollen, uh, excuse me, Tollen, huh? if I deny, uh, if non P, so if a bird is a pelican, it, it has this tangible pouch. These birds do not have this tangible pouch. Therefore, these birds are not pelican. So if the bird is if P, all the time, huh? if P, then Q. Okay, what is the P? Huh? A bird is a pelican. Q has this tangible pouch. Now, I have, uh, what I do? These birds do not have. What I do? I deny Q. Therefore, I deny P. Okay? So we can transform that into a categorical syllogism essay. Every pelican has a distensible pouch. These birds do not have this tensible pouch, therefore, these birds are not pelican. Now, here I use a pre pre. No, my my uh, middle term is twice as a predicate. You know? We can transform that. So, in fact, if you look at that, huh? um, I will take another example. Simple. Yeah. I use already in the past, I will use again. Huh? If dictator are men, then they, they, what is they? Dictator, they, dictators are mortal. Okay. So that if P, then Q. Okay. Now, if I say, uh, they are mortal. They are mortal. You're affirming to you? Uh, excuse me, they are, no. They are men. Huh? I affirm they are men. I affirm me. In fact, dictator, they are men, no? Therefore, I affirm you, they are mortal. Okay. That is uh, in a hypothetical presentation. No? But I can transform that. What is the difference between hypothetical and categorical? Hypothetical is based on hypothesis. Categorical is based on a fact. Because truth is the conformity to the fact, huh? to the reality. That is the distinction. Here, the hypothesis is if they are men, and in the other, they are men. We don't say diff. Huh? So I can say all men are mortal. And what is the fact? Dictator are men. Conclusion, dictator are mortal. And now I transform a hypothetical syllogism into a categorical syllogism. So what I have to do, instead of having a condition, I must have a universal principle. Remember that. Huh? 
In every synergism, one proposition was made universal, um, express a universal principle. So what is the universal principle? All men are mortal. But here, it was not an affair, it was only a supposition. Here, we have found that as a fact. Uh, categorical, a uh, category mean I affirm. Huh? The distinction is here, it is based on supposition. If here we affirm, he is, they are mortal. Men are mortal. Okay? So I transform dictator Armand, and what I, in fact, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is here. Huh? Dictator are mortal. And here, dictator will be the subject. So, what will be that here? The military. Middle term. You know? <laughs> it is similar to what we studied before. Huh? These children are sick because they ate too much chocolate. Okay? So, what is the conclusion? Too much chocolate. The conclusion? Sick. These children <laughs> are sick. <laughs> Why? Middle term. <laughs> no. So here, what is, the, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, then, huh? then, therefore, then, dictators are mortal. It's interesting, we don't say, we don't say therefore here, we say then. But here, we'll say therefore. It's a distinction, no? Therefore is used when you affirm with certitude. Then, it is when we affirm in a hypothetical, is a possibility. Okay. Now, we use that conclusion here, is the same conclusion, dictator are mortal. Dictator are mortal. You have the middle term. So, what you have to create, you have to create a universal principle. You see the technique? In fact, you compare hypothetical syllogism to a categorical. Both of them have the same conclusion. But in this case, the conclusion is conditional. Is condition, conditional. Huh? Is a condition. Here it is a fact, it is a, a certitude, it's not, uh, it is a certitude. Here it is not a certitude, it is a possibility. Hypothesis never affirm the certitude. If there is hypothesis, it is, for example, yesterday was election, huh? in the United States, for time of election. On Monday, the polls, they say, if, the Republican win Colorado, etc., etc., they will be in majority in the Senate. If hypothesis. Today, what they say on television? They did it. They, did it. they don't say if. It was a supposition two days ago. No, it is a certitude. Why? Because there it is a fact. Categorical, categorical syllogism as founded on facts. Hypothetical syllogism are supposition. And that is very important because it is the way science proceeds. Science proceeds here. They make experiences, uh, hypothesis, hypothesis, theory, theory. And finally, when they are absolutely sure, they'll become a uh, I give you an example. For many years, they worked on aspirin. Huh? Aspirin. Okay? Aspirin. The 40 years and the year and the year. Finally, they are so sure now, it's universally accepted in the whole world, in China, in India, everywhere they sell aspirin. You know? Then now it is so We can say, huh? if aspirin is efficient, use it for your headache. Okay? So, aspirin is efficient, therefore use it for your headache. That is hypothetical. 
Now we can see. Aspirin is good for your headache. Huh? See if, so use that for your headache. That is a factor. See the difference, huh? One is a hypothesis. We, we have theory. Here it is affirmation. Here it is universal principle. Here it is conditional. Conditional. Okay? But we'll come back on that because it's very, very, very important. Huh? Yes. So, um, to have a categorical, you need a, hy hy a hypothesis. Yeah, in fact, the categorical. But you can have a hypothesis without a categorical. Uh, it depends. Oh. Yeah, it depends. Okay. Because sometimes sometime you don't. For example, is it necessary to make a long study to know that man is a rational animal? Yeah. It is obvious. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it is evident that aspirin is good for. And they, uh, you have to prove that. So know. every categorical syllogism has, as a foundation, a hypothetical syllogism. But every, yes, if you want. But if someone, they are so obvious. Right, that you the, don't need When it. the fact is obvious, you don't. I, yeah, you know, so sure. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, many but times. theoretically, it's there. Yeah. In fact, when the thing is obvious, is a fact, we don't. Uh, for example, if I have 17 students in my class, I will prepare 17 paper for the, the game. <laughs> do I do? No, I, I have 17. Therefore, I prepare, you know. I don't, I am not obliged to say if I, I am. I, the fact is there. But if I go to the secretary and ask the secretary to print, huh, she will say, oh, Father Lobo did not say. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So if if he has 17, I will print 17. For her, the secretary will be hypothetical syllogism. For me, it's not hypothetical because I start from a fact. Here, they start from an hypothesis, a supposition. We suppose. I suppose. In fact, most of the time, police, for example. Well, if a policeman is in fact is is in the in the, is taking his own beggar at McDonald's, he look through the window and you see a man huh, stabbing another man. Does he say, oh, if? No, it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> huh? But 911, we call and the police arrive and we see the man stabbed there. So you see, if it is that man or if that, if that, we make many hypotheses because we are not in front of the fact. But we are in front of the fact we don't make hypotheses. Okay. At the end of the, the class, second part, I will explain that in detail. Okay? But that is very, very important. Here you have the induction. <coughs> and here we have the induction. Okay? But I will come on that after. Uh, I go to page 101. Um, so the condition uh, here. The condition becomes the universal. Huh? The condition becomes the universal. The human being's search for truth rests not in condition, but in factual and real answers. So, in fact, the hypothetical syllogism is only a preliminary to the categorical conclusion. It is what my brother asked me. Huh? Many times, uh, the, 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 the hypothetical prepare the categorical. Huh? Aspirin was hypothesis for a long time. Now it's a, a fact. We, everybody accepts aspirin is a huge tool. Okay? Uh, remark, <laughs> page 102. One should note that in a conditional syllogism, the antecedent, huh? the antecedent T, correspond to the subject in the categorical E, huh? the subject dictator. And the consequent correspond to the predicate. That means uh, in the consequent you have the predicate, excuse me, the predicate, and we have the um, we have the subject and in fact the middle term will be in the hypothesis. Uh, the middle term will be the trick is always the same. Begin always by the conclusion. Conclusion. Identify the subject and the predicate. Identify the subject and the 
predicate. And after that, you can arrive to a conclusion. You know, but this dictator are mortal. Dictator are mortal. Therefore, now dictator are mortal. What is the middle term? It is the third one. The third one. You know? Is the reason why I always begin? Is not. Is not uh, the creation of the world. Huh? <laughs> you, 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 find a conclusion. Subject predicate. And look at the other. Ah, the third is the middle term. And you try to have a universal principle, including the middle term. And the best is to put the first on the middle term as subject in the major supreme. Huh? Okay. So. So pay, uh, we have the example here. Huh? If these seminarians are called by a bishop, huh? I will give you one or two other examples. Well, here we have that. Huh? If, they are called by, if they are called by a bishop. So what is the conclusion? Huh? Seminarian will be ordained. Huh? If they are called by a bishop, they will be ordained. They are called. Huh? They are called by a bishop. Therefore, seminarian will be ordained. Huh? Transform that. All those who are called by a bishop uh, will be ordained. This seminarian are called by a bishop, therefore, this seminarian will be ordained. So we have to uh, find the conclusion. Conclusion is this seminarian will be ordained. Huh? Okay? Um, now, the twofold operation of the hypothetical syllogism. Well, the first we saw opponents when we affirm and tolerance. But before that, I will give you some other examples to understand better. <laughs> well, if I say, if students are sick, don't say sick of philosophy. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> if they are sick, no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> they will be able, excuse me, they will not be able to play football. Okay? If now, if I say <laughs> they are sick, I affirm P, they are sick. So students are sick. sick. Then they will not play football. Okay. You understand that? I affirm P, therefore I affirm Q. Okay. Now I want to transform that into a categorical syllogism. So what will be the conclusion? What will be the conclusion? What is the conclusion here? Those who are serious. What is the conclusion? They will not play. They will not play. Football. So these students will not play football. Okay. Now, what will be the major and the minor? Well, what is this student here? What is the function of student? Subject. And here? Predicate. Huh? They will not be playing football. Okay? Now, look at that. Well, what, what is the subject here? Student. Student. Hmm? Student. And what is the, what is the predicate? Play, fo huh? play, uh, play football. Able to play football. Okay? What is the middle term? Sick. Sick. The middle term will be sick. So, I have to create a major universal major with sick and the predicate. So what can I say? Whoever, huh? Whoever is 
for sick, will not be able to play uh, football. No? Huh? Whoever is sick, what is that? Is the middle huh? and able to play football will be the risky case here. Huh? Well, excuse me, uh, will not be able, huh? will not be able. So, whoever, or uh, whoever is sick, will not be, or if you want, we can say nobody sick, huh? no one sick. No one sick, or no one person sick, or no sick person hmm? will be able to play football. The minor now. So, this student are sick. The middle term. The middle term is distributed. Here is undistributed. The predicate is distributed. Conclusion, the predicate is distributed. The subject is undistributed or distributed. So, we have not the same thing. We are hypothetical and categorical. So, it is an exercise you can do. I will ask probably. This is for the minor, you said these students are sick, right? Yes, these students are sick. And these students are sick. Yeah, the minor. Yeah. Okay. Well, I pass to. But the, it, it, there is a, something important in what we studied before. If, if P, then Q, Oh, you are film P, you are film Q, okay? That is valid. That is valid. If, if you say if P, then Q, and you deny Q, you, you deny P. Q. That is valid. The two valid. Okay? The two valid for. Now, if you say, I can erase that, yeah? Yes. Okay. Erase that. If you say, if P, if P, then Q, and you uh, affirm P, can you affirm Q? Yes. Yes. No. no. And finally, if you see I, if P, then Q, and if you affirm Q, can you, excuse me, here, deny. <laughs> If I deny, I deny P. Huh? So here, if I have film Q, nothing. Look at that now. Here, if you see the effect, can you see the cause? No. That is very important when we study philosophy of God. You cannot affirm directly the existence of God from the effect. <laughs> that is dangerous, what I say, but that is logic. I cannot start directly from the effect to a film of cause. The policeman cannot arrive, he see a dead man, he say, oh, see, the Job Law, he kill him. If he has no proof. No proof. That means here, he has induction. You have to prove. So when we studied the five proof of St. Thomas and the moral proof of Kant and St. Thomas, all those proof, is this to arrive to affirmation of Q. But Q is obtained, uh, excuse me, P. The P is obtained after a long demonstration, experimentation. And we, we will come many times on that, many times on that. We cannot start from the effect to go directly to the cause. A doctor, <laughs> you go to the doctor. You say, doctor, I have a problem in my stomach. I, I have pain in my stomach. Can you say, oh, it is because you drink too much beer, or because you eat, you, you eat too much spice, hmm? or be too much chocolate? <laughs> no, he has to make a diagnosis. That means many questions. Finally, we find a conclusion. But he can say after, take that medication, and that will be that effect. That is different. He starts from P to Q. 
Uh, it starts from the cause to the effect. If I, you, I, you don't work, you will not succeed. You don't work, you will not succeed. Okay? So that is from the cause to the effect. But here from the effect to the cause is quite different. And that it is what we studied in the, the text I gave you here. You have that, huh? On page uh, 105, huh? 105. In that, uh, those explanations I will give you will be very important for your studies in philosophy and in theology. That, that is very, very important. That, that two pages you have in your... Uh, that is very, very important. Okay. So we try to make that understandable. So you can, after that, use it. In fact, it is, we can summarize that very succinctly. But I, what we saw here... Huh? We can summarize the page in two things. If P, then Q. We are film P, we are film Q. That is reduction. Now, if P, then Q. Huh? If you are film Q, to are film P, you must proceed by induction. And to proceed by induction, you must make experimentation. Experience. In experience, it is what we call a posteriori in Latin. After a posteriori. If you reason, you, you state from reasoning, huh, you deduce, it is a priori. Here we have the essential, that is the essential of the two pages. The essential is it. The rest is the development of that. Induction, de uh, deduction, induction. Deduction is to start from a general principle to an application. Huh? It is a priori. It is before experience. Huh? A priori before experience. Here it is after experience. Huh? After experience. Your mother say, huh, if you don't study huh, uh, tonight, if you don't make your homework, you will not watch television. Okay? That, uh, if you don't study, you have no... That is deduction. A priori, your mother said that. A posteriori, you did not you study or you did not study, that is after experimentation. So your mother can say something before and after your action. You know, if you eat your soup, you have ice cream. You add ice cream, therefore you ate your soup, maybe not. Huh? So the two ways, in fact, it is the two ways of thinking in the human mind. We think either by deduction or by induction. So look at your text now. Follow that very attentively, huh? attentively. Because everything I will say is here. Huh? First, it is a demonstration. A syllogism is a demonstration. Huh? It, a deduction huh? from the essence of a thing or from the necessary property of a thing. For example, man is free because he is rational. So I start from the essence of man, animal, rational, animal, rational, and I deduce the capacity of uh, being free. Huh? Okay? <coughs> so I start from principles and apply that to, huh? if you play with matches, you will put fire. Huh? That is a general principle. Okay? And in fact, after that, <laughs> you put you, you play with that. Huh? Oh. Now, it is a priori. That means before experience. And a priori demonstration is a legitimate argument from evident a priori, when it is evident, huh? premise, from something prior in nature or in time to the being huh? in the con. For example, the demonstration from cause to effect. I touch from the cost, I go to the effect. You drink 12 beers, 
you have a big headache the day after. Huh? Okay? From the cause to the effect. From the form to the proper property. You are rational form. Huh? Therefore, you can talk. Therefore, you can laugh. Therefore, you can will, etc. Huh? Or if you want, from P to Q. Huh? If I have MP, I go to Q. Huh? If I have MP, therefore, I have from Q. Okay? From the spirituality of the soul to its immortality. So I start from a, a universal principle or from the cause, I go to the effect. Huh? From the human intelligence to man's capacity to laugh. That is a priori. I, it's not necessary. It is because I understand the essence of the thing. I, I arrive to affirm, for example, a triangle. I know what is a triangle. I can affirm a triangle as three angles and three sides. You know? That is a priori. Huh? A priori. We call that also in scholastic propter quid demonstration. Well, what is important is the, what follows. As long as the subject and the attribute are convertible, there is proper quid demonstration. For example, a triangle is a three-sided and three-angled figure. I can say a three-sided and three-angled figure is a triangle. That is, we call demonstration proper quid. In fact, both are, a man is a rational animal, a rational animal is a man. Okay? <laughs> I continue. God is the infinitely perfect being, or the infinitely perfect being is God. In fact, here, the middle term is the proper cause of the attribute. The middle term is the proper cause of the attribute. Well, if I say, for example, uh, um, a triangle is uh, God, uh, God is... Uh, Infinitely perfect being. God is infinitely perfect being. Okay? So, why I can say that? Who will say that? Because he exists by himself. Huh? He exists by himself. So, the middle term is the cause of the conclusion. I give you another example. For example, man, a human soul, is immortal. The human soul is immortal. Why? Because it is incorruptible. So the incorruptible, the middle term, is the cause of the immortality. So in that, the middle term is the cause of the conclusion. Uh, for example, dictator, we saw that, dictator are mortal. Huh? Why? Because they are men. So the middle term is men, and the fact they are men is the cause of the fact they are mortal. So in that, the middle term is the cause of the predicate, uh, in that case, okay? If I say, for example, God is creator, God is the creator, why? Because he's omnipotent, huh? So the omnipotence of God is the cause, if you want, is the cause, is the explanation of the God is creator, okay? I continue. Um, now, it is, a, that kind of syllogism is analytic. Huh? It, we put, we don't add something to the subject. When I say God is a creator, do I add anything to the subject God? No. If I say John is a rational animal, do I add something to John? No. If I say John is able to laugh, do I have something to John? No, it is in his nature. Okay? So from the nature, I go to the property. In fact, that's interesting. No? From the nature, rational animal, I go to the property of what is rational animal. That is deduction. I know the thing, I can see the implication of that after. You know? okay. So I go to that exit. When we analyze the idea of triangle, we discover in it huh? The idea of a figure having three sides and three angles. When we reflect on the idea of God, we discover that in the idea that God is an infinitely perfect being. When I analyze what is a man, I discover that man is a rational animal. Okay? That is analytical. 
In fact, when I say John is a rational animal, I add nothing to John. But I discover in John what it is. He is it is nature, rational, and his nature is animal. I add nothing. It is an analytic uh, judgment. I analyze to understand. When I say a triangle is a figure with triangle and three sided, I add nothing to triangle. I analyze. Huh? Okay? Analytic. So I continue. This predicate adds nothing to the subject, but only expresses what it is already there. Huh? For example, I say God is just, I add nothing to God. If I say John is intelligent, I add nothing to John. But if I say John is a good golfer, I add something to John. If I John is a seminarian, I add something to John. Okay? And finally, and yes, the last paragraph. So we discover or put into evidence ideas which are already contained in the essence or nature of the subject. And finally, the last column, the middle term, uh, here we saw, it is the cause of the, pre, the, of the attribute. Uh, we, got, we go from the cause to the effect. We go from the nature to the property. Uh. See, it is a demonstration, a property. When assign the proper ontologic cause, uh, why man is immortal? Uh. Man is immortal. Why? Because middle term is incorruptible. Because he is incorruptible, he is immortal. So we, we analyze. Huh? We, the, the, in fact, we, don't, we have nothing. We have nothing. But we, we, why I say God is creator because he is omnipotent, I have, no, I have nothing. But the middle term in my reasoning is causing the predicate. Okay? So uh, I continue. Middle term of an attribute's inherence in the subject. That means the attribute is already in the subject. When I say, for example, God is just, John is intelligent, and the intelligent is in John. And when I look at John, I discover he is intelligent. He is a will, etc. He is intelligent. I discover it is already in. I say God is merciful. I discover the mercy in God. I add nothing to God. When I say a triangle at three sides, I discover the three sides in the idea of triangle. Okay, so uh, the human soul, uh, oh, well, I go now to the second here, that is uh, the induction now. Induction is based not on re rational reasoning, but experimental uh, reason, experimental demonstration. Induction, and it is from the effect, uh, from Q to P, uh, from the effect Q to P, that is induction. Uh, given through experience. For example, the proof of the existence of God. You know, I can prove directly the yeah, other exists because I see the moon and the sun. Okay? From facts to general principle. From the sensible order to the intelligible order. Huh? From many experiences with uh, aspirin pill to the conclusion that aspirin is a universal remedy for headache. Huh? In fact, nickel is in, in my mind, if first is not in my senses. Huh? In, in fact, here we, we arrive to think about something from our experience. That is induction. Huh? induction. It is a posteriori, huh? from experience. Huh? It is a legitimate argument from evident a posteriori experience. For example, from the premises better known that, than the conclusion, through the premises are effects posterior in being in time to the cause. Huh? P, a Q, is prior in, uh, uh, prior in time. I know, in fact, I know the effect before I know the cause. I know, for example, the defective is, he knows the, the, the dead body before he knows the cause of the death of the body here. Okay? Um, it is the effect uh, is the, the, the effect is not adequate or convertible. Here I cannot say John is a golfer and golfer is John. I can say John is a rational animal, rational animal, but I cannot say John is a golfer and, and a golfer is John. 
because John is one among the conferred. That here is not convertible. That means what I discover, I cannot apply that to everything. You know? okay. So the, the, that is a posteriori demonstration. We, can, we start from experiences to affirm something universal. Well, yes, to start from experiences. I cannot affirm that tiny law is good. Uh, that take years and years and years before we were able to affirm that. Third column. It is a queer demonstration. They mean a demonstration, but because. You remember, these children are sick because they ate too much chocolate. Huh? Okay? In the syllogism, because introduces the middle term. That is the fact of experience. The middle term is a fact of experience. And the minor must be a fact of experience. Okay? We start from experiences, and finally we go to the cause. So the middle term is not the proper cause of the attribute. You know, here, if I say, John is a good golfer. Because he won 10 trophies, uh, 10 medals, for example. The middle term here. Why, he, why did he win, he did, why did he win uh, 10 medals? What is the cause of that? It is the predicate. The predicate is the cause of the middle term. In the other case, when I say God is creator, huh? so the omnipotence of God explains the power of creation. So the middle term is the cause of the effect. No? Here it is the predicate, it is the cause of the middle term. That is the difference. If I say, for example, um, student are, uh, are serious or are successful. Huh? <laughs> successful, okay? Why? Because they have A, yeah? okay? A plus plus plus. <laughs> so, in fact, the, 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 the success is the cause that they have A, no? It's not the first I have A that I'm successful. Think about that. When you receive A, is A the cause of your success? No. no. Is your success is the cause of your A. So the success A is the cause of your A. <laughs> in, that is the difference. Huh? In, a, in, um, in a deduc induction, the, the predicate is the cause of the middle term. In, in, in deduction, the middle term is the cause of the predicate. So when you study, think about that, okay? Uh, <laughs> so I will stop here. Next class, I will take that back. But I try to understand. There those two pages, they are logic, but they are also philosophy of nature. They are also philosophy of God, and they are also uh, metaphysics. But that is a tool for you. Huh? So when the teacher will explain that in another class, demonstration a priori, demonstration a posteriori, uh, deduction, induction, you will know at least the essential. Okay? Thank you, Father.